Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called Part 3, Time to Fly. So, another episode I really love. Spoilers for this episode and everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode that was redundant. And, yeah, so before I dive in, the top link in the description box allows you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important strike. And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, yeah, let's dive in. So, yeah, we open on Huyang training Sabine with swords which I quite liked. I, I like how much it feels like something out of a samurai movie. It's not, you know, like, like I mentioned about the, in my videos on the first two episodes, it's not this really acrobatic kind of lightsaber stuff that we see in the, the prequels. And Hu Yang continues to be really mean. He knows he's not playing Kilgrave right now, right? Like, David, you were amazing in that role, but not every role can be that. And then they do the the thing with, you know, like in A New Hope, because today you can't make something officially Star Wars that isn't really, really, really nostalgic, other than Andor, which I'm really looking forward to season two of. But, yeah, they, they do the thing with covering the entire, you know, how am I supposed to? I can't even see. And and I don't even remember the the follow up line. I think it, you know I almost like tuned it out. It's like okay, we get it. It's it's a reference. I think it took too long for the training to get to the point of sparring. Like I quite liked it once they were hitting each other's training. You know, which I think might actually be like the the kind of training. That, I I don't know if it's samurai, but certainly some East Asian culture using it for, for, you know, training. But, but yeah, um, I like it in theory. I, I just thought it, it took too long to, to get to the sparring. I, I especially like there's at least one shot where we don't see Ahsoka. We just see the, the training sword tap the, the shoulder of Sabine Wren. You know, I thought that worked really well. Like, basically giving us as little perception of the, the world around her as she actually has at that point. And... Yeah. Um, Jason Sindula is referenced and not long after we see him. And, yeah, the Senators really don't believe that a war is coming and I forget if I I I think I might act, actually somehow manage to not bring this up in the the videos I did on episodes one and two but this is of course how the, the first order are able to rise the you know people who were faithful to the Empire not being taken seriously as the threat that they continue to be imperial remnants and yeah so uh, you know Hera runs into Jason who was indeed playing with Chopper which yeah that's I 100% believe someone his age would love playing with <sighs> yeah um I didn't really feel like that I, maybe maybe Jason being on the show will end up making sense later. Like, I'm not saying that he, it doesn't, maybe the character will have a point later, but so far, just him saying, you know, oh, Sabine's trying to be a Jedi, I want to be a Jedi. Like, you know, maybe by, before the end of this run, training for him to be a Jedi will start and, like, come to fruition in a later, but, like, there's not much chance that he's going to be you know, much of a Jedi, you know, he hasn't even started training yet. And the, the scene just ends. It really felt very fan service -y, like, you know, yeah, obviously we want to see Jason as a Jedi. He could be amazing, 
because his father was an amazing Jedi, and them's the rules. In Star Wars, you know, most of the... You know, and I... I, I really appreciated the sequel trilogy trying to subvert that. I'm, I wish that they had stuck with it. But, yeah, as you know, I get that a lot of people want to keep it that way, want for it to be a generational thing. You know, Anakin Skywalker was amazing, Luke Skywalker was amazing, and, yeah. Now, yeah, we have some more musing on if Sabine can become a Jedi, first Ahsoka and Sabine, and then Ahsoka and Hu Yang. So we're more than halfway through the episode before they reach the system where the planet is, and <clears throat> they only actually reach the planet itself by the very, like, close to the end of the episode. So, yeah, um... I don't know if this episode is going to end up being padding, because it really does seem like nothing much was accomplished. Like, basically, you know, it underlines the fact that Sabine currently is not where she needs to be to use the Force. Even if she's not going to be a full-on Jedi, you know, it would be very beneficial to the cause if she could use the Force. And they don't really make a lot of progress on that. They kind of just reiterate that, yeah, she's... Yeah, now I'm repeating myself as much as the show is. Um, I mean, I feel like the only... The one thing that needed to be in this episode was the, the fact that... You know, yeah. Okay, so the two things. Among the things that needed to be in the episode are the Senators not taking the threat seriously, and the, you know, Ahsoka and... Ahsoka, Sabine, and Hu Yang reaching... What did they say? De Deno... Denobar? De Debonair. The planet Debonair. And... I don't think the we needed 30 minutes of episode just to get those two things, you know... But I'm guessing someone really wanted there to be a full eight episodes. And yeah, that's... I'm, I'm hoping that there won't be much padding in the rest of the show. I like that to, to get back to... Yeah, so they're... You know, they're... Yeah, they, they get to the system. They're dealing with... The, the enemy fighters, and Hu Yang, like many a droid in some similar circumstances, has some thoughts, you know, and I appreciate that, oh, hey, they actually do listen to him, you know. Poor 3PO. And, yeah, you know, the Ahsoka finally asks Sabine, what do you need? You know, the it's not the right time to try to push her. This is when you want to rely on the stuff she's already amazing at. And, yeah, so Hu Yang, you know, asks, you know, get, get us closer. Closer, please. A little too close. Step back. Split the difference. And <laughs> Shin with the burn on, um, crap, I can't believe I'm, Mor Morgan, you know, congratulations, you almost had her, we'll deal with her from now, uh, just, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, you know, if, if Morgan hadn't been, you know, shutting down Shin, maybe the, yeah, there wouldn't be this, this conflict, very cool when Ahsoka was on the wing. It really it reminded me of something out of Visions, which I think is one of the best, you know, possibly the best animated Star Wars in... Uh, yeah. 
Let's see, very cool to see Pergil. Boy, people who have not watched Rebels are really going to be googling to try to figure out what that. I'm I'm sure the the you know let's see, new rock stars and Screen Crush are going to be able to help them with with that. Uh, yeah, I think that might be everything that I have to say. Um, right, uh, apparently some people think that, let's see, uh, Marak, the, the Inquisitor, is secretly Ezra. I mean, certainly, if I had to say, I, I don't, right now I don't really think so. But I will acknowledge it definitely, again, it fits the, the Star Wars M.O. And, you know, they're all about nostalgia these days. So it would, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker also went to the dark side after seemingly losing everything, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, for one thing, how did he get away without Thrawn also getting away. Yeah. Um, I think... It's, it's great to see Genevieve O'Reilly playing Mon Mothma again. Uh, I didn't think she really needed to be in this episode, and I, I hate saying that, because I really do like... And, you know, I, I think it's very cool that she's actually, like... She was supposed to appear as Mon Mothma in Revenge of the Sith, but uh, the scenes ended up getting deleted, and then, you know, like, what, a decade later, she's playing Mon Mothma in Rogue One, and, yeah, has been appearing several times in Disney Star Wars since, you know, so... And, and I thought she was put to amazing use on Andor, so this really feels like a bit of a downgrade uh, so far. We're not all the way through the, the you know, I'm, I'm holding out hope that they will give her something compelling to do. Uh, I think it's maybe also because, like, you know, the other major characters have gotten really compelling stuff to do. And... Let's see... Right, and yeah, so the the episode ends on, you know, Ray Stevenson, R.I.P. standing, you know, clearly deep in thought. I can't believe there's people who think that I wasn't the best movie puncher. No, but he's obviously, you know, he does not like the idea of ending up killing some of the only remaining Jedi. You know, someone should tell him Sabine isn't technically a Jedi. That should cheer him right up. Yeah, um, that is what I have to say. So, so yeah, um, right. Theorizing, I'm hoping that it's not going to be like the next episode is going to take forever before they get. You know, it's just going to be Ahsoka and Ahsoka Sabine and. Hu Yang going through the, the the planet trying to get to where they are without really making progress. You know, I think maybe the the fact that so much of this episode feels like padding to me, not to be confused with padding ton the bear, which I hear you know, solid film films. Haven't really been paying attention to that phenomenon. Um I think they might have been in a little bit too much of a rush. I think that all the plot that was in the first two episodes could have been spread out over a couple more episodes. That might have been beneficial. But I don't know. You know, Maybe they will be able to find something really strong. Just the, the fact that the good guys have already reached where the bad guys are carrying out their ultimate plan... This early on, you know, we have, what, five more episodes? Yeah, there's a, a total five episodes left where this really feels like you could probably close it out in about one episode. I, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to... 
yeah. Um, thought the, the space battle stuff was quite good. I'm always down for a Star Wars space battle. I really appreciated that, you know, the ship actually did get severely damaged. It would feel really awkward if somehow it they, they made it through with very little damage and um yeah that is that is what I have to say so yeah um I am you know despite the negatives I am looking forward to next week to see where it goes so may the force live long and prosper